Hi, my name is Marcia Hathaway. I'm a professor in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Minnesota, where I teach a horse nutrition class. Today I want to talk about meeting your horse's nutritional mineral needs and what you're going to want to do is be able to pick out a product that meets your horse's requirements and satisfies your concerns as well. When we're thinking about then of, of the major minerals, I mentioned that with the exception of sodium chloride, most of them are met by your traditional feedstuffs. That is not the case for the trace minerals. The trace minerals are needed in such small quantities and they're quite variable in terms of their presence in different plants. The recommendation is that you don't try to factor in whether the feedstuffs, your forages, and maybe even cereal grains, how much of each trace mineral they're providing. The nutritionist will recommend that you simply provide those as supplements. So for trace minerals, we recommend that you would provide on a daily basis or on an average daily basis what they need. And there's a variety of ways of doing that. Um, you can use a mineralized salt block. Um, this would be just pure salt. This would have um, some trace minerals in it. This would have other trace minerals in it. Um, you can do it with loose salt, like you see here. Again, you can see there's some real differences in terms of, of color, and some of that difference has to do with what content they would have in terms of minerals. So you might think, if I look up in the NRC what my horse should have, then why wouldn't all the products be the same? Why wouldn't they just formulate the product so it meets these requirements? And the problem is with that is that Depending upon the product, they might have different goals. So some might have the goal of you feed it once a day and it meets all those requirements. Others might have it be you're getting some mineral from some source and their product may be making up the difference. So if they're assuming you're getting some minerals from your traditional feedstuffs but you might need some others, then they will make a product to fill that niche. So you really need to look at the feed tag to see what's in it um, to really decide whether um, which product works the best for you. Many people use the hard um, salt block. Um, certainly horses will lick this. The problem with the hard block is they really were designed for cattle. If you've ever been licked by a cow, you know that the tongue is very um, rough. It's almost like sandpaper. And that's, if you've ever been licked by a horse, you know that's not really the case. So while a cow has no difficulty consuming enough salt with a hard block, a horse really tends to quit licking the block before they're requirements are met. And what research has shown that if you provide the same mineral content and salt content in the loose form, they will eat 20 to 25 percent um, more loose salt. And really your goal should be to optimize or maximize voluntary salt consumption by making it as easy as possible. That would mean you might want to avoid products that are as hard as a rock. The products that last are really not the products you want. You want your horse to eat them. Now, Maybe a loose mineral is not going to work if you have horses out in the pasture 24-7. You set this out and you get a two-inch rain, gone. You know, you're not going to do that. Um, in which case, maybe you need to have something like the salt block. But if you have the wherewithal to um, place loose mineral, probably in a couple different areas in a paddock or a pasture, the loose salt would increase consumption. The other thing when I'm talking about looking at the tags, so if you looked at the feed tags on each of these products, you'd find them to be different. Um, but they would tell you what's in them because they've been formulated to contain. Some products, they don't know what's in them. So that would be a reason to avoid products that do not have a feed tag with sufficient information on them. These products would be the loose salt and the block salt would, or even um, some of those protein tubs that you see in pasture. Sometimes I don't have one here. They really are designed to be out in a pasture or paddock, a group horse setting. You really don't know how much your horse is eating if it's a group of, you know, three or four or five horses or more. You're just kind of assuming they want salt and they'll eat a certain amount. And how much they eat is based on what the salt content is. So something like this is probably 97% salt. The other 3% is the other minerals. So a thousand pound horse will eat on average one to two ounces of this and they get by default then those minerals. Um, if you had the opportunity though to provide the trace minerals on an individual basis and on a daily basis so I know I give them this amount and they eat it then I, whew, I'm comfortable. They got it. I don't have to worry about somebody chasing it away from a, a common setting. I don't have to worry about whether they like to lick the salt block or not. Um, and those would be cases of something that maybe would look like this which would be a ration balancer that contains 
all the trace miner all the trace minerals that um, a horse needs on a daily basis. Um, you would read the feed tag, make sure it's a match for what you want, um, and then you'd follow the recommended uh, feeding directions, which is probably somewhere like around one to two pounds. Depends on the size of your horse, and they'll tell you that. But if I give them a scoop of this, they take it up like candy. Um, they like the taste of it, and bam, I know they got all the trace minerals that they really need, and I can feel comfortable knowing that. Whereas with these, it's you really can't know. Um, alternatively, you can use a commercial product that is really designed to also provide energy to the horse, um, and but they so it's got oats and corn and some pellets, some dried molasses probably, and they've added trace minerals to it. So if you feed at the recommended level, which may be four, five, six pounds a day, then they're getting that energy and they're getting those trace minerals. But if your horse starts to get a little overweight or you don't think they need that much energy and you cut back, you have to be aware that you're cutting back on the trace mineral intake at the same time, in which case you might want to switch to a different product. So when feeding trace minerals, our goal is to provide on a daily basis everything they require. And we just assume that you need to do that because we don't want to try to calculate what's in the other feedstuffs. Um, and mainly that works fine because the safety range, the optimal range for feeding the trace minerals is quite broad. The only exception to that might be selenium. And with selenium, it has a little bit narrower safety range. So if you're, you'd want to compile all the sources of selenium. And so you just want to look at the feed tags and different things. And usually the feed tag will say not to be fed with any other sources of selenium. And so that's what you do. If you have questions at any point in time or you don't feel comfortable um, maybe using the NRC, it can be a little bit of a heavy read um, or um, understanding the feed tags that come with these different products. Boy, feel free to contact um, your, you know, your nutritionist at the university or the information person at the feed mill where you're purchasing things or the feed companies. They will be more than happy to explain and to clarify any questions you have and help you. Um, make a choice that is appropriate for you, your horse, your circumstances, and your budget.